to a particular. You package them. They'll package them you and package help them, them think of, 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 of themselves differently. But I think it's also important to understand what you can do and what you can't do. Does it, does some, do you sometimes say thank you but no thank you to candidates? I've had to. Yeah. You've had to. Yeah. That must be painful, no? It is painful, but it's, it's, it's better to get that out of the way immediately right. rather than taking a person through a process and knowing that you won't be successful in placing them. You know, it, sometimes it's money. You know, we are an executive search firm, which means that we're at a much higher level in terms of compensation. And, you know, sometimes people will come and expect us to place them at $125,000 it's more difficult and we don't have those opportunities generally. Yes. A question which is related to, uh, to the, the global operation of your, of your firm. Um, as you said before, it's present all over the world, you yeah. know, a lot of offices everywhere. Mm -hmm. One of the problems that the United Nations has faced by having executives coming from all over the world is the discrepancy between a degree that would be obtained in a country Right. and a degree obtained in another country. Sometimes it was not feeling the same purpose. It was not as valid as another one. Mm -hmm. When you have a firm like that looking for executives, let's say that tomorrow you have to find someone for Coca-Cola that you're going to have to send to Russia or something like that. Mm -hmm. And you have a global search going on. Are you, are you wary of, of, of experiences and degrees that would be coming from other parts of the world or you're an equal opportunity uh, studier of, of human beings. How does not, that work? No, not so much that. I think though we are a global firm and I do think that generally degrees are comparable. You know, a baccalaureate would be the same as, a, as an AB or a, a, a bachelor of whatever. Um, so I think we, we look at it that way. I really don't think that that becomes the emphasis. I think experience. experience. I really think at the end of the day, it's what have you done and what are the experiences you've had. Um, there, obviously, whether you've graduated and whether you've had postgraduate studies is important and a consideration, but I don't think that's always the determining factor in terms of whether you get a job or not. I really don't. So when you interview a company that's looking for an executive, because actually you have to interview them to know exactly what they need. Right, and and right. sometimes their need, they don't even know what they need. You have to right. extricate it right. out of them by, you know, asking a lot of questions. Yeah. So once you have your profile, then do you, how do you find the people that you are going to submit? Where are these people? Yeah, like? that's a very good question because, you know, getting the profile, getting to the profile is the first step. And that's a, a process called due diligence where we talk to lots of people. It's not just the management, but in some cases in the not-for-profit world is talking to a variety of constituencies to really understand the job and the context for that opportunity. Not-for-profit, I'm sorry, which is one of your specialties, Yes, right? yes, I'd, I'd done that for nine years, eight years when I came to Hadrick and Struggles. It was a part of the business that I was extremely interested in. But, uh, but due diligence being the first part of the process, really understanding the job, understanding the culture of the organization, understanding the people that this person will work with. It's all very important for us to be able to sell it. And also, to some extent, as learning as much as we can about the firm, because we are, in fact, the ambassadors for this organization, yes. if you think about it, for the company. We have to go out and sell it, you know? Yes, you're credentialed by someone to represent and work on behalf of that right. organization. It's but true. but the question was, you know, really finding the pe people. Finding we the people. Once you have, you know. Yeah. Hydrogen Struggles has this enormous data bank base of, uh, of 1.5 million people. 1.5 million, million people. And it's constantly refreshed and mined. So those names are, are constantly being looked at and new ones added and some going out. But in addition to that, there are lots of sources. Whenever we get an opportunity, we talk to lots of people in various industries around the world in some cases to find who are the best person. Who do you think could do this job? And we go through a process of explaining what the job is. And the other part of this, and it's very, very important, I think, too, is to do original research. You, hi you hired us, the company hired us to do to search 
And that means going into the marketplace and searching. The, may not, the name may not exist in our database. 1.5, it probably is in one way or another. But we but have to go really out search. and really, really search. And that's the fun, I think, of our business, is to explore and to find new names and, and sort of new stars, if you will. Can you give us a few tricks on how to explore new directions rather than go through a 1.5 million database, which is... No, I won't tell that because okay. they're my tricks. Those are no, your no, tricks. No, 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 they're my tricks. But the truth of the matter is you, you, you really read the paper every day. You listen to television. You, you look at magazine articles. You look at who's on the boards of organizations, who don't, who's on the board of association. You look at programs of big scientific meetings, for example, if you're looking for a scientific or pharmaceutical, see who presented something. You know, and you never look at a magazine or a newspaper the same once you join search. 